Hey everyone, it is Shannon, and I am feeling like watching some more horror. And it's um right at the end of the Spring into Horror readathon, which means I should be reading. <laughs> I did finally finish one book, so I feel like, yay! Uh, I still want to finish a couple more. I'm really, I thought I would get through more in two weeks. But anyway, that being said, I felt like I wanted to watch some horror. And I'm not quite sure what to do because in some ways I kind of just want to watch Final Girl because... It's the first thing that has come up. You know, I've had my eye on it for a while. Oh, someone recommended someone recommended quiet ones or something. Something? Something? Recommended quiet ones? Maybe Netflix. The quiet ones. Somebody Anyway. But I'm kind of thinking maybe I should just watch Final Girl because I just I just kinda of feel like it. And that I feel like that Unfortunately, it doesn't provide that interesting an intro, <laughs> but that doesn't mean it isn't true. I guess I could roll the die, but I'm like, no, I just want to watch it. I just want to watch Final Girl, so I'm going to watch Final Girl. It's, oh, can I, can I get more information on it? With, how do I do this? Okay. Uh, okay. I don't want to read it, actually. I'll just tell you the cast. It stars Abigail Breslin, which is, I, I'm still... You know, I first saw her in Little Miss Sunshine, and so I'm sure a lot of people like me find it a little strange to see her older, but it happens. It also stars Wes Bentley and uh, Alexander Ludwig, who is, of course, from uh, Vikings. Um, I just assume everyone watches Vikings. <laughs> he's also in, uh, he was in Hunger Games, the Hunger Games. Um, and it is directed by Tyler Shields, and I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to watch it. And I think that's fine, too. Like, I'm love I'm really enjoying doing the randoms, and I'll probably do the random for the second poem. But I know I want to watch this, so let's watch it. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it. All right, back in a bit. Okay, I am back, and I've finished watching Final Girl with Abigail Breslin, Wes Bentley, and Alexander Ludwig. And this is actually, I didn't realize it's a Canadian-American uh, co-production. Very early, I was like, oh, this looks Canadian, or at least shot in Canada. It's like, hello, you know, West Coast. Um, that said, it actually stylistically is a bit, um, I was trying to figure out if it, it's a, it's a really weird film in, in the fact that stylistically it feels like it's in the 50s. Um, in terms of what people are wearing, and that there's a diner, and that the diner is simply called, like, diner. Um, but it also kind of doesn't really matter in a weird way. Um, and one of the things I really liked about this film was the style. It was gorgeous. There's a lot of, as you can even just tell from this uh, picture, there's a lot of high contrast, especially in terms of the lighting, and it's very atmospheric. It's not very logical, <laughs> and that's fine. Like, for me, I'm like, it set, it, like, it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't uh, hold that it wouldn't make sense for that to be very well lit and that not to be very well lit or whatever. I don't care. It's consistent and it's beautiful and that's good enough for me. Uh, that said, the actual <laughs> story of the film is rather disturbing. Um, it follows a young girl. Did they say her name there? They do not say her name there. Veronica. And um, sort of taken in by somebody and trained to be like an assassin kind of um and um and it's interesting because i like how it plays on the final girl final girl is a trope in horror films if you're not familiar um there's like you know a set sort of parameters of the that tends to be the case for girls and women who make it to the end of a horror movie so it's kind of a you know like it's in this case i'm sure it's playing with that but in this case it's also redefining that, um, which I thought was kind of cool. The one challenge I did have that with this film is a lot of the characters aren't emotionally accessible, um, so, uh, like, because this falls more in the line of horror movies that are about sort of, like, serial killers and sociopaths. I think it even says, yeah, sociopaths. Um, but I think you could, like, so there's a group of sociopaths, and then there is Veronica, and Wes Bentley, who is the person who is training her. But I think, <laughs> you know, there's also kind of an argument that you can make that them being assassins are kind of also sociopaths. Like, there's not really a lot of emotional uh, behavior there, too. And they're also... Tea time! Um, there also is... Um, 
uh, <laughs> that was really long. <laughs> what am I trying to say? Okay, so you can make an argument, I think, that they're also kind of like sociopaths too. They do have, you know, they're not that different. The two groups are not that different from each other, in my opinion. Um, you know, you so that for me makes it challenging. And in terms of horror films, the kinds of films I like tend to be more the supernatural or um, what are the other genres of horror films, um, but not sort of this kind of movie where it's like serial killers, sociopaths, people just killing people to kill people. I don't find that very interesting, and it's it's too realistic. It's it's too realistic. It's not realistic. It's just not. Um, it's not a story I find engaging, and I did care for Veronica and Wes Bentley's character, but they're so cold that it's a little bit hard. And there's a play on that too. Like they, that's part of their story, so it makes sense. Whereas the other sociopaths just really pretty much are sociopaths. So overall, I enjoyed it, but I more enjoyed it for the style. Um, and um, although I think it was very well written and quite well acted, and the directing is great. Like just as I said, visually, like how it all comes together and the vision there, it's, that's pretty amazing. So I was impressed with it. Um, although I didn't, didn't enjoy it and too much because of the nature of the film. But for a film of that ilk, that's, you know, found it really impressive. So it's weird because I think it's so funny because when I pulled it up, I just saw, I normally read the little blurby bit and I just saw sociopath and I thought it meant she was a sociopath. And I think that was lingering in my mind. And I still think there's an argument there. So let me know if you've watched Final Girl, if you think they're all sociopaths <laughs> or what are the inklings to indicate who isn't. So curious about that. So now I don't quite know what to do because I, um, cause I was thinking like I'm a, I could roll a die for this, but I've seen so many of the horror movies. Let's start with that. And if I've seen it, if I've seen it, I'll just keep rolling. I guess I'll just keep rolling, rolling, rolling. Keep those eyes rolling. So I go across and down until I get. One. 14 is lucky. 14. 14, I guess. It's not why I'm doing this. Where's the camera? There we go. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5, 10, 15, 14. The Devil's Dolls. Oh boy, these little worry dolls look too cute to be evil, <laughs> but when the murders start to happen, there's a lot of worrying to do because of my interest in the windmill. Hmm. That's another slasher movie. I I am not feeling I'm gonna say no and I'm gonna do another 14 because I don't want to do another slasher movie. So five, ten, fifteen, stepfather have you seen it? Okay, five, ten, fifteen, back one. Ouija two, Ouija experiment two. I haven't seen Ouija one. Maybe, maybe I should watch Ouija 1, or the Ouija experiment, let's find it. Oops. How do I do that? <laughs> maybe I'll just find it. Come on, Ouija. Okay, now I have lost all sense of where I am. Maybe I should just pick something. I haven't seen this one. Because of my interest in Ouija Resurrection, too. It kind of doesn't make sense. Ouija Resurrection. Resurrection. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What's happening here? I have succumbed to the scroll. Okay, I'm just gonna... I'm gonna close my... Alright, I know I try not to do the whole apologizing thing in videos, but I have to apologize because you either just saw me waffling about in terms of not being able to pick something or really abrupt cut. Um, and after watching Final Girl, I decided I had a hard time deciding what to pick next. And then so I decided on later, because I ended up not watching something right away, I decided to watch The Awakening. I haven't watched it yet. I'm trying to find it. The Awakening as a as a scary-ish movie, um, because the final girl, one of the reasons why I picked it was I wanted to see it. So I thought that's a good parameter for the next film. So I'm going with The Awakening. So this is from 2011. It stars Rebecca Hall, Dominic West, and uh, Imelda Staunton. It's directed by Nick 
Murphy. It is a thriller or a 20th century period piece. And this one follows... Okay, so this is the description. A haunted boarding school calls on Florence Cathcart, who disproves hoaxes for a living. But the strange place leaves Cathcart to question reality. Ah, ah. So this is very, in terms of horror movies, this is definitely has more of a supernatural feel to it. And it feels very atmospheric, which also goes very much in line with Final Girl. So change my mind. I'm going to go with The Awakening. And um, I think I got to come up with a new system for horror stuff because I've seen so much of it and I'm pickier. Um, I know what I like. So I need a new system for that. But for today, Final Girl and The Awakening. See you in a bit. All right, I have now watched The Awakening, and I'm really glad that I trusted my gut and decided to go with this as the pick because I really enjoyed it. And I think it actually makes it quite a nice double bill with Final Girl because they're both very beautiful horror movies. Uh, Final Girl is very stylistic and sort of uh, like avant-garde. I would say like it's over the top and not realistic. And this is very realistic. This is set in... 1920 um, in England and um, follows a woman, just like the description says, follows a woman who is, um, she sort of disproves uh, paranormal uh, and supernatural ghosts and stuff like that. And um, she gets called out to uh, a request, a school requests for her to, you know, help them not and then at the school there's sort of one believer and one non-believer um and which i always think is a great dynamic to be honest it's one of my favorites um and uh i really enjoyed it and rebecca hall is great and wow they got the she's got <laughs> there we go um <laughs> that is really great in this i haven't seen her in tons i know she's quite known for i remember her hearing about her first from vicky chrissy Vicky Cristina Barcelona, which I still have yet to see, um, but uh, I know her from something else, and um, she's also, she's, I can't remember, I can't, I know I've seen her and stuff, I just looked it up. Um, there are a lot of other people that I recognize in this, of course, Dominic West, who was on The Wire, um, he was also in 28 Days Later, uh, Imelda Stanton, who is, who was in Vera Drake, which I don't know if I saw that, I don't know where from something else, and then they don't have his name, his name here, and I forgot his name, but there was, um, someone in the film that I was just, it was driving me bananas, I'm like, I know who that is, I really know who that is, and it's the guy who plays Bran, uh, on Game of Thrones, so there was lots of familiar faces here, what I really, but one of the things I really liked about this film was how atmospheric it was, how um, creepy it was, um, how in terms of the supernatural type stuff and how it really got the atmosphere and the scare, scary factor and the fear factor. Um, and they talk about that as a theme, fear and what it does to people. Like it's not just trying to scare you, it actually has more of a like it actually has a point of view and it's discussing it and so that's really cool and um yeah i just i mostly really liked it some of the story pieces i'm like i i was a little unsure exactly what was going on um i think i'd have to like i need some time to sort of like sort through it or maybe watch it again not saying that there's anything that doesn't make sense or anything like that but it's just like you know if you watch a lot of these atmospheric kind of Horror, horror movies, like, you, like sometimes it's like, you take it a while to catch on, and then figure out what was going on, and stuff like that, but it doesn't matter, because how, the story's still really great, the acting's great, the setting is gorgeous, and um, I really enjoyed it, so overall I'm really, really happy with it, I'm definitely going to give it a thumbs up, because I would love to have more suggestions like this, and, um, yeah, yay! The Awakening. So that was a real good pick. That was a real good pick. So two beautiful horror movies. <laughs> awesome. Let me know of any beautiful horror movies that you've seen recently or not recently or that are on Netflix. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching.